kids. Welcome to our Halloween segment of Tina's Terminology. Today's word of the day is relic. The word relic is a noun, which means an object that is from a past time, place, or culture. For example, Hannah and Josh uncovered relics from the lost city of Atlantis. Stay tuned for more examples of the word relic. Hey guys, I'm Scott. I'm here at the Bartow Public Library to see what kinds of cool things you could find at our libraries around Pope County. Let's go in and check it out. This is Sarah. She works at the library. So Sarah, what's with my local public library? What is it for? Uh, the public library is for the community and we have books to read, we have movies to watch, and we have music that you can check out. Um, we have libraries as far from the east side of the county to the west side of the county. So there's something for everyone. We have computers that you can uh, do programs like Word and PowerPoint for presentations. We also have programs here at the library, at all the different libraries. And we have puppet shows, we have story times, and we have read to a dog opportunities. We also have a bookmobile. So if you can't make it to any of the libraries, there is a bookmobile that makes several stops in the county. And you are more than welcome to go onto the bookmobile and check out books that way. So how can I take all of these books home? Uh, you take them up to our front desk and you check them out and we can head up there now. So this is where I can check all of the books out. How do I do that? Uh, all you need is your library card to check out your books and you can come up to the front and check them out as we are here. Some of the books are reference books so those have to stay in the library. And DVDs are also different. Um, every library has different rules when it comes to movies. Uh, some of the libraries you can check out movies. Some of them you have a set limit of how, what you can check out and some of them you can't check out at all uh, if you're under a certain age. As long as we can find the book title or the author that wrote the book, we can find it in our catalog and we can place it on hold over at the computers for you. That's so cool. Let's head over to the computers so you can show me how to do that. Sometimes the library catalog says that a book I want is available, but just not where I am. What if I'm in Winter Haven and the book that I want is in Lake Wales? So if the book is not here, but it is at a different library, we can do what is called a hold. So we can place the hold for you when you look into the catalog and we can have it sent here for you and you have seven days to pick it up. Or if you cannot come to the library, we have a service called Books by Mail. So we can send the books to your house. We also have online digital resources. If you can't find a book in the library, you can check on our OverDrive, Hoopla, or One Click Digital. And we also have the option for Zenio for libraries, which is magazines, and we also have a new Comic Book Plus. Cool. So how much does it cost to get a library card? A library card is completely free. All you have to do is bring in your parent with you, fill out a form, and we just need to see some proof that your parent or you live in Polk County. Can I use this card at the Library of Congress? No. Books a Million? Uh, no, you have to buy books there. Library of Alexandria? Um, that bird down. I mean the new one. Uh, the Biblioteca? No. Blockbuster Video? Uh, didn't those go out of business? I don't know, I'm an animated character. True, still, no. You got any manga? Yes, I'll show you where those are at. Awesome sauce. Good night, everybody. Everybody, I'm Ariana and I'm here at Exploration's Five Children's Museum for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Sue. She's going to help us with our activity today. So Sue, what do you have us doing? We're going to do something called ice painting okay. or as I heard a little child call it, popsicle paint. <laughs> I have some um, egg cartons, these are disposable egg cartons, but I have some egg cartons full of paint that I put popsicle sticks in and I put it in the freezer. Okay. So it's actually frozen paint is what you've got right there. Cool. And I have the three primary colors. I have red, blue, and yellow. And we can use those three colors to paint with, but also to mix to make other colors. Yes. So choose, you can do, take one of each. If you want to take one of each out and let them sit here, then they can start to melt a little okay. as you're using them. we will do that. You want do blue? You, sure. Do you like art? Yes, I do. Okay, great. All right, so you can just take it. You can start with whatever you want. You can draw lines. You can make dots, squiggles, whatever you'd like to do. And the 
warmer it gets, the more the paint melts, and then okay. the thicker your line is going to get until eventually you're going to end up with kind of like a melted ice cream cone. You know how it starts to drip? Yes. That's what's going to happen to the paint. You can see right here a little piece fell off right there, and then it starts to, to melt a little bit faster. If you wanted to mix your primary colors and make secondary colors, all you need is a spot of one color. I've got a spot of blue here. What have you got? I've got red and yellow. Red and yellow. So with red and yellow, what are you going to be making? Um, orange. Okay. So just rub the two together or rub a spot of one and then rub another on top of it. See how it mixes quickly and easily into that other color. And you could do this. This is actually liquid paint that I used. You could use liquid paint. You could use water with food color, whatever you would like to do in order to make the picture. This is awesome. And if it starts to melt a little bit, it gets a little bit, a little bit juicier. <laughs> so if you wanted to use some of my blue, what are you going to do with blue? Blue and red. Okay. They would make purple. All right, so I'll put some blue on here for you. Ooh, nice, nice shade of purple. All right, so which one are we missing? We've got red, blue, yellow, we've got orange, we've got purple, so we're missing... Yellow and blue. Which we're going to make? Um, green. All right. Yeah. One thing we have to remember, though, is that these popsicles are not the easy kind of popsicles. <laughs> just to be able to do that. We wouldn't want to do that. No, this is great. Cool. You could even make a rainbow just with these three lines of color and then mix the colors in between. Cool. You could do that. There you go. Thank you. That was so much fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it and you remembered not to eat them, just to paint with them. Yes. <laughs> if you really want to put your senses into overdrive, then come down to Exploration's Five Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. See you again soon. I'm Ariana. Bye bye. The word relic is a noun, which refers to a surviving object from the past. For example, let's visit the museum to look at the relics from ancient Egypt. All right, in our last lesson, we learned that finding the perimeter and area of a rectangle or parallelogram is pretty easy. To find the perimeter, we just add all of the sides together. And to find the area, we multiply side A and side B, or the base times the height. We also know that we can find the perimeter of a triangle the same way as we find the perimeter of the rectangle, just by adding all the sides up. So now let's look at how to find the area of a triangle. Think about the shape of a triangle, like this one right here. The trick to finding the area of this shape is to make it into a rectangle. We can do this by copying the triangle and flipping this one around, then putting the two triangles together. And bam, we have ourselves a parallelogram that is made up of two triangles. So then we can just find the area of the parallelogram and split it back into two. So the area of our original triangle would actually be one half the base times height. Because remember, the rectangle is base times height. So the great thing is that this equation, this little technique works on any triangle. For instance, here is a different shaped triangle. Our angle on this one is bigger than 90 degrees, so we would call this obtuse. So we can see here the height is 5 and our base down here is 8. So let's duplicate this triangle and then we're going to turn it around and smash it right up against the other one and that will make our parallelogram, see? So, as you can see, it even works with a weird shaped triangle just like this one. Now we just take our base, which is eight, times our height, which is five, and multiply that by one half. So five times eight here is 40, and we'll make that 40 over one, so that way it matches our one half fraction. Then we're gonna multiply this top line, the one, times 40, which is 40, and the two times one on the bottom here, that's two. So that gives us 40 over two. And we'll reduce that down to 20 over one, which is 20. So our triangle, our original triangle's area is 20. 
Try this at home. Work with your parent to cut out some weird shaped triangles. You can make two exactly the same size just by folding the paper in half before you cut out the triangle. Then put the two triangles together to make rectangles and parallelograms. Then use a ruler to measure the triangle's base and height and see if you can figure out how much area is in your triangle. Welcome, lovers of fine literature, to the October edition of Storytime. This month's theme is Halloween, but fear not. Though the story may get a little spooky, it won't be scary. So sit back and enjoy the October edition of Storytime. Now look, the point of reading is to use your mind. So that's enough of all that special effects nonsense. Now then, time for our story, which is the Egyptian adventure. <laughs> Here we go. Now then, Dr. Carmen couldn't wait to see the tomb she had heard so much about. A dimly lit hallway and the rumours of an evil pharaoh did little to prevent her from entering the tomb. As she took a step forward, the weight of her foot on a tile opened up the bell burial chamber. Dr. Carmen shone her flashlight into the room, revealing a jeweled sarcophagus. If her heart was pounding before, then it was ready to burst out of her chest now. She pushed the cover off the sarcophagus. It fell to the floor with a loud bang. Dr. Carmen shone her flashlight into the sarcophagus. Slowly the light travelled from the wrapped feet upwards, but when the light hit on the mummy's face, Dr. Carmen fell backwards. The mummy's eyes were staring right at her. The mummy slowly sat up in his sarcophagus. As he turned to face Dr. Carmen, she bolted for the door to escape. The mummy held out his hands and slammed the door shut before Dr. Carmen could get to it. She slammed into the door just as it closed. As she clawed at the door to escape, she felt the dry wrappings of the mummy's hands envelop her throat. Now really, I said spooky, not scary. This was completely inappropriate. Ah, my dog Spot. That's more like it. Let's see. It seems Fred's new rescue dog always wanted to go out during his favorite TV show. The small dog howled at the door until Fred let him out during the first commercial break. Out into the backyard, the little dog vanished into the night. At the second commercial break, he listened for sounds that the dog wanted to come in, but there were none. When the show ended, he turned off the TV, heard howling from the backyard and knew the neighbors wouldn't like that. So he ran to the back door and threw it open. He looked into the backyard, which was lit by a full moon. As he whistled for Spot, it wasn't his faithful furry friend that leapt towards him, but a massive snarling beast. The creature tore at his clothes, clawed at his arms and snapped at his face as he tried to hold it at bay. He felt the creature's hot breath on his neck. For heaven's sake, do you want every child in Polk County to be afraid of the family dog? <sighs> what? The new babysitter. The new babysitter was running late. So Sophie and Will both promised to be on their best behavior as their parents left for the evening. The family car had only just left the driveway when the twins heard a siren coming from the back garden. Sophie ran to the window with Will in tow. They stared out the window and saw a trail of their toys, including Will's toy police car, leading to a tree. In the daylight, the tree was a great place to play, but at night, it seemed sinister. Will and Sophie decided to brave the spooky garden and collect their toys. The last toy was at the foot of a tree. Drawing courage from each other, they held hands and reached for the final toy. As they reached for the toy, a figure moved from beneath the branches. 
It was a girl in a sweater and jeans, and she appeared in front of them. She smiled sweetly at them. I am your new babysitter. She started to walk out from under the tree. As she stepped into the moonlight, her face changed. Everywhere where the light hit, her clothes were tattered and her face became a terrifying skeleton. Do you want to play a game with me? Do I need to explain the difference between spooky and scary? These books were downright frightening. <gasps> uh, <laughs> You have been watching the October edition of Story... <laughs> Time! Hey kids, it's me, Dion, again here for Power Up to get you off the couch to do some exercise. I'm here at Lake Parker Park, that's right here in Lakeland, and I know that's close to your house. So you should come out here and check it out because they have playgrounds, tennis courts, soccer fields, trails to walk on. You may even see some animals out here. So I'm gonna check out one of the trails. Follow me and let's do some exercises. All right, guys, we're here at the first course on our advanced timber challenge course here at Lake Parker Park. It's all these exercises you can do all along the trail. This one is called the chinning bars. I'm sure you've seen them before. You simply grab them and pull yourself up. The easy expectation is three times. So that's all I'm gonna do. You pick the one that suits your height. If you're a little shorter, get on this one. All right, we're gonna try and do three here. One, two, Three, and that's three. Let's go to the next challenge. All right, we're at spot number two on the Advanced Timber Challenge course. This is called the Scaling Wall, and I am terrified because you are literally throwing yourself over the wall. Now, don't try this on mom's couch at home because you're probably gonna hurt yourself, but come on out to the park with your parents and they can help you over it. I'm gonna give it a shot. All right guys, we've got an exercise here that you guys can do at home. I've got a sit up bench here, but you guys can just get on the floor, maybe have brother or sister or friend hold your feet down and you do your sit ups. My feet will be under this bar here uh, to hold them down. And my goal is five, always set a goal for yourself. We'll see if I can do it. You can cross your arms here or put them behind your head. I'm gonna put my arms here. Go ahead and do it with me, five of them. I know that's kind of tricky, but I hope you did it with me. You're probably wondering why I'm on the ground now. I've not fallen out of exhaustion. I'm not that out of shape, guys, come on. I'm here to do the frog kicks. Something here at Lake Parker Park. You can do it at home too. Just lay down on the floor, put your arms behind your head like this, and you're gonna pull your knees up to your chest and kick out. And then pull them up and kick out. Let's try to do five of those. If you're really cool, you can do 10 of them. Keep trying. I'm gonna move on. Oh man, I'm getting tired from doing all this running around everywhere. So let's take a break and do some stretches. Stretching is really, really important so you don't hurt yourself when you're getting your exercise. One of them here at Lake Parker that they have is called a side stretch. So just put your arms to your side with me and just bend side to side. All right, guys, we're here at the vertical ladder. This is not something you can do at home, but almost every park that I've been to with workout stuff has this. It's really fun. You're gonna climb this ladder and come right back down the other side. Don't be scared. It's not that high. I can do it. Oh man, this is kind of high. Ah, uh, I hope I don't fall. <laughs> 
I knew I could do it, you can do it too. We've moved on to the balance beam. Venture at your own risk. Okay guys, let's do our push-ups. You know how to do this. Let's stop at 10 for today. Well, I've come to the end of the trail here, and that was only about half of the challenges offered on the Advanced Timber Challenge course here at Lake Parker Park. Lots of parks in Polk County have trails just like this one, so get with your mom or dad to find out where the closest park is to your house. Keep getting out there and getting active, kids. I'll see you next time right here on Power Up. The word relic can also refer to an object, custom, or belief that has survived from an earlier time but is now outdated. For example, your local library is not a relic. It is more necessary today than ever before. Welcome to Simple Snacks. My name is Bo, and today we're making something sweet and crunchy. The snack is called Apple Moons, and it tastes as yummy as it sounds. For our ingredients today, we're going to need an apple, peanut butter, granola, and cinnamon. When you pick out an apple, you want to squeeze it firmly. If it's hard, that means it's sweet. Get one of your parents to help you out and slice the apple for you. My apple is already sliced. So now that we have our apple cut and ready, let's move on to our peanut butter. You can use almond butter if you have that at home. It'll taste just as good, but we'll use the peanut butter with us today. Let's unscrew the jar, and this is where we want to grab our knife after we put the lid down. With our knife, we want to take some peanut butter from the jar and spread the peanut butter out onto the slices. We only want the peanut butter on one side of the apple. Make sure it's the wide, flat side too, because we're going to be putting some more ingredients on top of the peanut butter. We'll want a lot of space for those. The peanut butter has been spread on our apple slices, so we'll take this granola that we have on the side, and we're going to scoop some with our hands and sprinkle it on top of the peanut butter. Some granola comes with bits of dried fruit in it, and you can use that granola too. That just means your crescents are going to be extra good. Our last step for our apple moons is the cinnamon. You want to ask your parent for help because too much of this sweet spice may be too spicy for you. Take the cinnamon and sprinkle just a little bit onto the slices. Be very gentle of how you sprinkle it because you don't need a lot for it. Let's try it together. Wow, that tastes so good! Not only does it taste amazing, but it's packed with vitamins and nutrients that are also good for you. I think I'll be making this a lot at home. Don't forget to thank your parents for all of their help. That's it for today. Tune in next month for another Simple Snack. Hola, bienvenidos a Hablemos Español con Mima. Este es Antonio. Hola. Y este es John Carlo. Hola. ¿Y quién eres tú? Yo soy Juliana. Oh, ¿hablas español, Juliana? Sí, yo hablo un poquito de español. Yo hablo español y un poquito de italiano. ¿Italiano? ¿Hablas italiano? ¡Chao, Bella! Sí, mi mamá es cubana y mi papá es italiano. Oh, entonces tú eres una rana trilingüe. ¡Ja! Juliana, la rana cubana italiana. Bienvenida, Juliana. Yo hablo un poquito de italiano también. ¿Tú hablas un poquito de italiano? 
Sí, mi papá es italiano también. Oh, muy bien. Esta es una clase multicultural. Hoy vamos a aprender los colores. Los colores son muy lindos. Los colores como rojo, azul, amarillo, negro, verde, marrón, naranja, blanco, rosado, morado. ¡Qué lindo los colores! Antonio, ¿cuál es tu color favorito? Mi color favorito es el azul. Mi color favorito es el rojo. Y tú, John Carlo, ¿cuál es tu color favorito? Hmm. Mi color favorito es marrón. Juliana, yo sé cuál es tu color favorito. Sí, mi color favorito es el verde. ¡El verde! ¡Claro! Tú eres una rana. Una rana verde. Antonio, vamos a ver. ¿De qué color es una manzana? ¿Es verde o es roja? Hmm. La manzana es roja. Correcto. La manzana es roja. John Carlo, ¿de qué color es una rana? ¿Es marrón o verde? La rana es verde. Correcto. La rana es verde. Ja. Clase, ¿de qué color es la bandera de Estados Unidos? ¿Qué? Todos, todos, todos. La bandera, ¿de qué color? Es roja, roja azul, azul y, y blanca. blanca. La bandera es roja, azul y blanca. Muy bien, muy bien. ¿De qué color es la flor? ¿Es amarilla o es rosada? Es rosada. Muy bien, la flor es rosada. ¿Y de qué color es una banana? Una, una banana, banana es amarilla. amarilla. Claro que sí, una banana es amarilla. Ahora vamos a tener una pequeña prueba. Y ustedes pueden participar también, ¿de acuerdo? Muy bien. ¿Listos? ¿Cuál es este color? Rojo. ¿Cuál es este color? Azul. Azul. Y este. Amarillo. Y este. Negro. Negro. Y este. Verde. ¿Cuál es este? Marrón. ¿Cuál es este? Naranja. Naranja. Este. Blanco. Blanco. Y este. Rosado. Y este. Morado. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Esos son los colores. Los colores son muy bonitos. Ahora vamos a cantar una pequeña canción con los colores. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Listos? ¿Listos? Juliana, ¿lista? Red is rojo, red is rojo, blue is azul, blue is azul, yellow amarillo, yellow amarillo, negro is black, negro is black. Green is verde, green is verde, brown is brown, marrón is brown. Orange is naranja, orange is naranja, white is blanco, white is blanco. Pink is rosado, pink is rosado, purple is morado, purple is morado. Me gustan los colores, me gustan los colores, me gustas tú. Me gustas tú. Me gustas tú. Gracias. Gracias por cantar con nosotros. Y recuerden, el español es divertido. Spanish is fun.